हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम माय नेम इज मोहम्मद अली एंड यू आर वाचिंग आई एम बिलाल आज मैं दे रहा हूं रिएक्शन वीडियो अगर टाइटल आपने से पढ़ लिया होगा किस चीज पे है ये मैं एक वीडियो के थ्रू से गुजरा हूं मेरा मुझे नजर आई है और मैंने कहा यार ये पब्लिक एक्शन देनी चाहिए इस पे सबके साथ तो बड़ा अच्छा चल रहा है ये موضوع ठीक है ना मतलब बड़ी अपनी हाइप पे कह रहे हो कवरेज कह लो या फिर इसकी मार्केटिंग और इसके कंपेनिंग वगैरह बड़ी अच्छे लेवल पे हो रही है आजकल और अगर निजाम से चलता रहा तो आई वुडंट बी सरप्राइज के कोई अगले 2 3 साल तक पाकिस्तान में भी इसके राइट्स के लिए प्रोटेस्ट वगैरह होंगे अभी भी हल्के-हल्के हो रहे हैं लेकिन अभी खुले आम नहीं हो रहे लेकिन कुछ 2 3 साल तक होना शुरू हो जाएंगे आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एलजीबीटीक्यू और ये पूरा निजाम जो है अब मैं आज बायोलॉजिकल रीजनिंग में नहीं बात करूंगा रिजलूट पे बात नहीं करूंगा उनकी कौम पे बात नहीं करूंगा अल्लाह के निजाम पे बात नहीं करूंगा फैन सिस्टम पे बात फैन सिस्टम पे बात करूंगा लेकिन फ्रॉम अनदर पॉइंट पर्सपेक्टिव तो अभी जो शुरू करते हैं नेक्स्ट गेस्ट कैरी फाउस सर्व्स ऑन द एकेडमिक एंड टेस्टिमोनियल काउंसिल ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल चिल्ड्रंस राइट्स इंस्टीट्यूट एज यू हर्ड इन टॉम इगल एंड सॉरी शी इज अ फेस अपोनेंट ऑफ सेम सेक्स मैरिज despite being raised by same sex parents and describing her mother as a loving gay parent she's in canberra to lobby against same sex marriage katie faust joins us now from parliament house thanks for being there thanks so much for having me have you actually managed to speak to any australian politicians yet we did um my my partner in crime millie fontana who is a resident of melbourne and also raised by two mothers um and i had a chance to speak with a couple members of parliament yesterday not the prime minister so far No, no. Um he hasn't called yet. Um now how is it that the daughter of lesbian mothers has become a leading opponent of gay marriage? How does that work? Well, simply because I recognize that while my mother was a fantastic mother and most of what I do well as a mother myself I do because that's how she parented me, she can't be a father. Her partner, an incredible woman, both of these women have my heart, cannot be a father either. children have a right to be in relationship with their mother and father whenever possible and as a society we should normalize a family structure that requires children to lose one or both parents to be in that household now trying to sway the US Supreme Court to rule against gay marriage you wrote to justice anthony kennedy uh, before that vote and you said you used to say i'm happy my parents got divorced so i could get to know all you wonderful women now you seem to be saying that was all a lie Well, there's a lot of pressure on children of gay parents to please their parents to sort of carry the banner forward for them. Um and you can read about this not just in conservative publications, but even books like Family Like Families Like Mine, um which was publicized by a pro-gay marriage uh daughter of um gays and she admitted and several of the kids in that book admitted that it's very difficult to be honest about this because of the political pressure surrounding this topic uh there's several children that have contacted me even since I started writing about this saying I agree with you but I'll never come out and speak about this publicly because my relationship with my parents is too tenuous now Katie did you find god uh, somewhere in this journey towards anti-gay marriage well i was not raised a christian um uh, but i did become a christian in high school and did that change things i mean did you decide that uh homosexuality was against the scriptures uh, against god's will something about that nature well i uh it took a long time honestly for me to get on board with what biblical sexuality says because there's a very fierce protectiveness i think that all children have for their parents um but what i was delighted to find when i read scripture is that god has an incredible heart for the orphan and that he's very concerned with the plight of children and that lines up very much with where we need to go in this discussion which is focusing on the rights of children primarily as opposed to emphasizing the desires of adults which tend to take center stage when we're talking about this issue now after your parents divorce because you originally had a father and a mother they divorce your father you say went off with other women why have you focused your main criticism on the homosexual part of the equation and not your father. Well, I I think that I'm pretty fair in my statements to say that whether you're heterosexual or homosexual, children have rights. And adults, the onus needs to be on adults to conform to the rights of children rather than children fitting into an adult's lifestyle. And certainly, uh I don't think that homosexuals are responsible by any means for the crisis that we face in America when it comes to family structure these days. 
Absolutely, heterosexuals have led the way on that charge. I got into this discussion primarily because what I heard from the gay lobby was that children don't care who's raising them, right? That children are just fine if it's two men or two women. And the reality is that anybody that's talked to a child who has lost a parent, whether through divorce, abandonment, third-party reproduction, or death, kids absolutely care. Family structure matters to children. And so I heard the LGBT lobby saying it doesn't care, uh, they don't care, and I, I don't think that that's reality. Okay, um, you also were motivated politically once President Obama announced his support for same-sex marriage, and you set up an anonymous blog called Ask the Bigot. Why did you do that? What did you call it that to start with, and what happened when you did it? Yes, well, you know, strangely, the URL wasn't taken for that uh, web name. Not sure why, but it was kind of born in an angry moment. I'm not really a confrontational person, but what happened when Obama evolved is to me it felt like media was free to play the bigot card. So now everybody that doesn't support gay marriage is a bigot, right? Because either you're isolated and you don't know any gay people, or you're indoctrinated, or you're homophobic, or you're the equivalent of a racist. And they were not giving any attention to people that had a genuine argument, a well-founded, secular, convincing argument for support of traditional marriage. And so I started blogging anonymously. You, you, that's, I was going to make that point. You started blogging anonymously. What happened? Why, why did you go public, as it were? I didn't. I was outed by a gay blogger who felt like um, I needed to be held accountable for my stance. And the truth is that I would not have filed a brief with the Supreme Court. Um, I wouldn't be having this interview with you today because I never intended to be involved in the legal fight. But because I was outed in the name of love and tolerance, I am talking with you today. Okay, so uh, just going to that Supreme Court decision. In June, Justice Kennedy authored, the same man you wrote to, authored the Supreme Court's decision in favour of same-sex marriage. He began in agreement with you, saying that no union is more profound than marriage. But he said of the gay people who had petitioned the court, it would be to misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. Their plea is that they respect it so much, respect it so deeply, that they seek to find its fulfilment for themselves. And now obviously the court agreed that their dignity was the critical thing here. Why do you disagree with that position? Well, because they have dignity, right? Single parents have dignity. People that have never been married have dignity. You don't gain dignity uh, by a government bestowing that on you. You just have it. The question is not whether or not they're, they have dignity. And the question is not even really whether or not they have the capacity to love and commit the way heterosexuals do. They do. They absolutely do. The question is, what is, how, what is government's interest in marriage? It's really not about affirming the connections that we have with one another. It has to do with the product of those unions. And there's something distinct about the product of a union between heterosexuals. What's distinct is that they make babies, and those babies have rights, and those babies deserve protection. Katie Fowles, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you very much for coming in to join us. Okay, we have heard the arguments in the video. उस मेरे नहीं ख्याल से इसका अच्छा आर्गुमेंट को इस लेवल के अंदर रहता है जो कि वो खुद भी एक दो माओ की बेटी है अब ऐसे लोग बड़े मजे की रोल प्ले करते हैं क्योंकि बैस तो बड़ी लंबी है कि भाई होनी नहीं चाहिए नहीं चाहिए उसने बड़े मजे की बात वो भी की है कि आप खिलाफ बोलो ना इसके एल के तो आप ऑटोमेटिकली आप वो आ जाता है कि आप होमोफोबिक हो या आप इरेशनल हो या आप राइटिस्ट हो या पता नहीं आप वो हो इलॉजिकल हो ऑल दो थिंग इज दैट देर आर सम प्रॉब्लम सिर्फ बायोलॉजिकल मसले नहीं होते ठीक है ना एक तस्वीर के बड़े पहलू होते हैं उनमें से एक पहलू ये भी है तो इट्स इट्स रियल नाइस वीडियो एंड या क्या बोल बात आपको समझ आ ही गई होगी नहीं समझ आएगी तो सिंपल सी बात यह है कि वो कह रही है कि इनकम्प्लीट फैमिली स्ट्रक्चर की वजह से बच्चे बहुत सफ़र करते हैं और ये बच्चों के लिए सही नहीं है कि वो ऐसी फैमिली में पले ठीक है यहाँ पर दो माए हों Okay thank you for watching the video of office